So far we have looked at using electron transfer to decide if something is being oxidised or reduced. Another way that's really useful and actually quite quick is to look at its oxidation number. And the book we use, Beginning Chemistry, has a really good set of rules outlined on page 59. I'm not going to go through each and every rule in this. What I'm going to do is go through some half equations to show you how we can use, maybe not even the full half equation, we're going to look at some redox pairs to quickly decide whether it would be being oxidised or reduced. So, for example, I could have some magnesium being burnt in oxygen, so in air, which has got a large portion of oxygen in it. And that should have been in one of the previous videos as well, and we see the bright white flame and the white ash type stuff being left behind. That white ash stuff is magnesium oxide. So if we were to do half equations for this, we would have magnesium being turned into its iron, which we know is Mg2+, because it doesn't have any other oxidation state or any other iron that's stable. And the oxygen gas in the air is becoming the oxide iron. Again, I know that because oxide is the only... Um, well, the metal anyway is the only way that that can become an iron, where it's gained two electrons to have a full outer shell. So when I balance, I could balance these out and see that this is being oxidised and this is being reduced. And then I could combine them, where I need two of the top equations so that I cancel out the four electrons, with two times two is four from here. And I end up with two magnesiums and one oxygen molecule becoming two magnesium oxide compounds, or moles of them. Now, often you won't be given the half equations, and it's pretty annoying to break the whole equation, the net equation, up into half equations to work out if it's oxidation or reduction. It's actually an extra step that you don't require. Instead, though, we use oxidation numbers. And... One of the really easy rules with oxidation numbers is that the oxidation number of any element is zero. So that means magnesium has an oxidation number of zero, and so does oxygen. I'll probably line through that just so you know it's not an O. So both of these have an oxidation number of zero, because they're both elements. Now, not that it's important for this year, but allotropes are also elements. So oxide, sorry, not ox oxide, start again. Ozone, O3, also has an oxidation number of zero. All right, so if it was ozone, that would still be zero. It means that if you've got carbon, it doesn't matter if it's graphite or diamond, it's still going to be zero. All right, so all elements are zero. That means every metal is zero. So that's nice and easy. Then if I have a look at this, the magnesium has become magnesium 2+. Any iron made up of just one element, what we call a monatomic iron, its oxidation number is its charge. So the magnesium, as I said up here, is a 2 plus iron. What if it was an element I don't know though, let's say barium, where I don't know what barium becomes. But I know that it becomes BaO, barium oxide is BaO. Then how do I work out what its charge is? Well that's where I need to know one of the rules about oxygen. Oxygen when it's in a compound or an iron, is negative 2. So I know that oxygen is negative 2. And the molecule or the compound, sorry, I should say compound there, the compound, the sum of the oxidation numbers has to be 0. So something minus 2 has to equal 0 because there's no charge on this compound. So that means I know whatever the other thing in there is, must be positive 2. So magnesium is positive 2, oxygen is negative 2, and when I add them together it's 0 because there's no charge in a compound. So the sum of the oxidation numbers in a compound must be 0. Elements themselves are always 0, and oxygen is negative 2, except in H2O2 where it's negative 1. It's the only time it's not. I'm going to do H2O2 in a minute to show you. Right, so oxidation numbers. What I can see is that magnesium has gone from being 0 to being positive 2. It has increased. 
So magnesium is being <coughs> oxidized. I can see that oxygen has gone from zero to negative two. That number has reduced, so that's reduction. If I have a look at my half equations up here, that's exactly what I see. For oxygen, the electrons are a reagent, so it's reduced. In magnesium, electrons are an outcome of the reaction, so it's oxidation. Okay? But if I wasn't given the half equations and didn't know how to break this up into an into one for, um, sorry, didn't know how to break this net equation into those, then I could use oxidation numbers to solve this instead. So I can use electron transfer or change an oxidation number or oxidation state to do this. Okay, I said I do hydrogen peroxide. There's a reason for that. H2O2 is a pretty awesome thing. It can auto-oxidize. It can turn it, it can oxidize itself and reduce itself. And the way that that happens is that we get the two half equations for H2O2. So it So here's the reduction one, and here's the oxidation one. When it reacts, when you sit, leave it in a bottle for any length of time, it starts to react with itself to make oxygen and water. So what I'm going to look at here is the oxidation number of every element in there to, to sort of show which one is oxidation and which one is reduction. Okay. H2O2 is a bit of a special case, but it's got one of our most important rules. And that is that hydrogen, when it's in a compound, is plus one. Okay, so the hydrogens in both of these are plus one. Well, if my rule that these have to add up to be zero because it's a, a compound are in place, then oxygen can't be negative two. Because positive one plus positive one minus two minus two, so you've got two oxygens and two hydrogens, would be negative two. It's not allowed to happen. So what we find is because the way this is bound together, oxygen has got an unusual oxidation state. In this case, it's negative one. In both of these, because it's the same molecule. So this is one I recommend you learn off by heart. Hydrogen peroxide has hydrogen at plus one, but oxygen at minus one. Every other time you see oxygen with something else, it's minus two. And every time you see it as an element, it's zero. Okay, so look at this, it's made oxygen as an element. So it must be zero here. Here's some hydrogen ions. What's that going to be? It's a monatomic ion with a charge of plus one, so it must be plus one. So only the oxygen has changed oxidation state. The hydrogen has not. Up here, hydrogen's here at plus one. Hydrogen's here are plus one. But the oxygen is in a compound and it's not H2O2. So therefore my earlier rule comes in that they must be that it must be minus two. So in this case the oxygen has been reduced from negative one to negative two. While at the same time, in another molecule of it, it's been oxidized from negative one to zero. So that's why we call it auto-oxidation. It's oxidized itself, but in doing so, it's also reduced itself to make more water. Okay. Nearly done all the rules, believe it or not. So it's not too, not too hard. We're going to have a look now at the dichromate one, though, because that's quite a tricky one. All right. So we're going to look at the dichromate um, iron, just the iron, because it's often with potassium, um, which is a spectator iron. I'm not going to do the whole half equation here, I'm just going to do the pair. I should know now that dichromate, that orange stuff, when acidified, will be reduced to chromium 3 plus. So it becomes this. I'm not going to balance that equation. I'm just going to assign oxidation numbers to prove that it is reduction. The chromium 3 should be quite easy. If we look at magnesium there, if we look at the hydrogen ions here, it's a monatomic ion. So it's going to have the same oxidation number as its charge, which is plus three. Well, that seems quite high, so you'd actually sort of suggest, oh, maybe it's actually oxidation. But it's not. Now I'm going to have to break the, the dichromate one down a bit. 
I'm going to need some pretty some simple algebra to solve this one. Okay, so I'm going to use I'm going to use x, typically used in algebra for an unknown. Chromium's my unknown. I actually know oxygen because oxygen, when it's bound to something, has to be negative two. So bear with me while I break this one down to be a little algebra statement. And everyone groans about doing maths. I've got two chromiums. Chromium's going to be my x. Okay, so I've got two chromiums. In algebra, I would write that as 2x. That's my unknown. I have seven oxygens. Each oxygen is negative 2. Now, this won't equal 0 because this is an iron, not a molecule. So these things here have to add up to the charge of the iron. Negative 2. So now I'm going to take this a bit further. 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. So 2x plus negative 14 equals negative 2. I'm now going to put the four, I'm going to add 14 to both sides. Okay. So I've got 2x equals negative 2 plus 14 is positive 12. So x, which is my chromium, is positive 6. And you'll notice that I'm writing the pluses in there when I write oxidation numbers. Okay, I like to be very, very clear that it is positive 6. So here is my proof that chromium is indeed being reduced. It's gone from plus 6 to plus 3. And when we do the balanced equation, there's 6 electrons on this side. So that kind of makes sense. It's picking up 3 electrons for each chromium atom. There's two chromium atoms there, so 3 and 3 is 6. There's your 6 electrons in the balanced half equation. I'm going to do one more because I know these ones are quite hard when it's an iron. I'm going to do the sulfate iron because it's a common one in level 2. But I'm not going to break it down quite to the same level of this one. So the sulfate iron. And so I'm not going to show what it becomes. I'm just going to show you how to assign the oxidation number to the sulfur. Okay. So, sulfur's my unknown, so I'll call it x. So I've got x plus 4 times negative 2, because oxygen is always negative 2, equals negative 2, because that's the charge of the iron. When I solve that, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. I add 8 to each side. Again, x is actually going to be positive 6 in this case. Right. Now, sulfur is quite a, a useful element for assigning oxidation numbers and one you should expect to see in assessments and in practice tasks because it can have oxidation numbers 0, it can be plus 4, it can be plus 6, it, it can be negative 2. It's got, a, well, it's got variable oxidation numbers, so it's a really useful one for, an, for assessment and for practicing, so expect to see that one a lot. So, I'm just going to do a quick, I said I wouldn't, but I'm going to do a quick synopsis of the rules. One, elements have an oxidation number of zero. Number two, the oxidation number of any monatomic iron, that means an iron made of just one atom, like magnesium 2 plus, like copper 2 plus, like iron 3 plus, like chromium 3 plus, their oxidation number is their charge. So if you look at the charge, you've got the oxidation number straight away. Rule number three, which is a very important one, except in H2O2, any oxygen in a compound or an iron is negative two. Rule number four, which is also a very, very important one, hydrogen, when it's in an element, uh, sorry, when it's in a compound, is going to be, or an iron, is po positive one. And there is one exception to that, and that's the metal hydrides. So if you see, for example, lithium hydride, LiH, the rule about monatomic ions comes first. So lithium would be plus one, and hydrogen would therefore have to be negative one. And the reason for that is rule number five. The sum of oxidation numbers in a compound must be zero. So they all add up to zero. And rule number six is if you have a polyatomic ion, more than one atom in an ion, the sum of their oxidation numbers must add up to the ion's charge. 
And if you can get here on those rules, you can now use oxidation numbers and electron transfer to justify that something is oxidation or reduction. And even better, which element in it is being oxidised or reduced.